Happy birthdays and Oh, 
by your holy name. We praise your holy name today. Blessed be the name of Yah. We praise you today. Hallelujah. We praise you today. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We praise the Almighty today for this Shabbat. We're grateful to see each one of you here today in the sanctuary. We want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of you who join us by live stream today. We trust that your week has been blessed. We trust that your hearts have been encouraged and strengthened. Mm -hmm. And you have been built up in your faith. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Scripture teaches us that Yahuwah is good. Yes. He is told. His mercies endure forever and his truth to every generation. Yes. And I'm glad that I'm a part of the family of Elohim. Amen. In Hebrew, we call that the Mishpokah. I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad that the Almighty has brought us in and that he has delivered us from whatever he has delivered us from. Amen. Many of us before we came into Messiah were in different places, mm -hmm. different things. Some things we were in and a part of we don't even want to mention. We could just call that the kingdom of darkness and all that came with it. But aren't you glad that you are delivered? Amen. You have been saved. Amen. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be saved, to be rescued. And much of the time, before we were rescued, before we were delivered, we didn't really know what we were in. Amen. You know, you can you can be in something that's for your destruction and be completely blind to it. Yes. Yes. I, I like to equate it <coughs> to what I would describe the matrix. How many of y'all ever seen the matrix? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I know some folks don't go to movies anymore, you know. But for those of you who recall The Matrix, it gave you an image of how people were in their minds living life, but they were controlled by a program. Mm -hmm. But they were in captivity, being controlled by a program and not knowing the condition that they were in. Many people in the world are like that today. They're living life, they believe life is great, they believe life is wonderful, they're, they're experiencing things, but they don't realize that behind the scenes there's a great deal of spiritual activity that's going on. 
strings that are being pulled and mechanisms of control that we human beings are not even aware of that are pulling at us, that are steering us down different paths for our own destruction and demise. We bless the Almighty today Amen. that he has brought us out, that he has given us an awareness and insight so we can know our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, this time, Zion, we want to prepare ourselves to begin our Shabbat gathering. And as is our norm, we always like to make note the sacredness, the set-apartness of this day. This is the Shabbat. The Most High set it apart, made it to be special more than any other day of the days that he made. And so we want to regard it. We want to remember the specialness of it. And we want to know that as he has called us to be set apart, he himself sets himself apart. And this is something that is important for us to be mindful of, that he calls us to do something that he himself is doing. So it's not just one-sided here. But he calls us into this because of what he does and how he regards it. And so we have been called to be like him. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. And so let's remember the sacredness of this day. With that being said, Zion, let us stand all over the sanctuary and let us give reverence to this time of prayer before the Almighty. Abba Yah, we thank you. We bless you, we magnify you, yes. for there is none like you. Abba, we recognize that you are the sovereign one of the universe. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins that we have through our Redeemer, our Messiah, Yeshua. We bless you for the opportunity that we have to come and to gather on this special day and to acknowledge you as our Elohim, our mighty one, the one who made us, the one who keeps us, the one who leads us, the one who guides us. Abba, we can surely say that you are our everything yes. and that without you, we can't make it. We need you daily. And we thank you for that understanding that we have in this time in our lives. Abba, there was a time where we thought that we could make it on our own, that we could survive on our own, that mm -hmm. we were just self-sufficient and did not need you. But Abba, we realize that the very breath that we breathe is given to us by you because of your mercies. And for that, Abba, we're grateful. We pray for those who are not able to assemble with us today, Father, that you minister to them where they are. We pray, Abba Yah, that you would bless their families, those who are connecting with us by live stream. We pray, Abba, that there would be a union and a hot union that we all share together. I pray, Father, for the unbelievers in the community that they come to repentance. <clears throat> I pray, Father, for the sick, that the sick may be healed, that their bodies may be restored to full health and function. I pray, Father, that you would minister to your people everywhere, those who may be struggling with challenges and trials. May their faith remain firm. May their hearts remain steadfast. May they continue to Walk in faith and believe your word. Father, we pray for Zion everywhere that is acknowledging the Shabbat, that's gathering on the Shabbat. We pray, Father, that you would speak to them, minister to Zion everywhere. We pray that you would cause healings to go forth all throughout the world on this Shabbat among your people. May they experience your covenant blessings. We pray, Father, that you would work miracles. 
We pray you would heal marriages, restore families. We pray, Father, that you would touch our minds, that we would always rest in your shalom. May you be glorified. And in this assembly today, Father, speak to us in every aspect of the gathering. Yes. We pray if there are needs that need to be met, meet every need. There are questions that need to be answered. Abba, answer the questions. Yes. Let your people return after this gathering with full assurance that you're on their side. And we will bless you. We will thank you. We will glorify you for everything that is to be accomplished. Through the mighty name of our Redeemer, Yahshua, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. The Most High be praised in all. Hallelujah. 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 The Most High be praised. You are worthy of the globe. Yes, hallelujah. We did the whole do. Hallelujah. Bless the mighty one of Israel. If you remain standing, Zion, we want to declare the Shema at this yes. time. Bless his great name. We're going to go to the book of Devarim, chapter 6, the fourth verse. Devarim, chapter 6, the fourth verse. We declare the Shema, acknowledging who he is to us. Bless his great name. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echad. Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand. And they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Bless the mighty one of Israel. This time I'm going to ask. Our dear brother, Dawid, he will come at this time. He's going to read to us Devarim chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. So let's receive our dear brother at this time. Say amen. 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 Shabbat shalom, call Israel. Shabbat shalom, call Israel. Amen. And ask that everybody please turn to Devarim, or in English Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. And the word of Yahuwah, the Most High, reads likewise. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, from the house of bondage. You shall have none other Elohim before me. You shall not make you any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down yourself unto them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and guard my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Guard the day of the Shabbat, or Sabbath, to sanctify it, as Yahuwah, your Elohim, has commanded you. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat, or Sabbath, of Yahuwah, your Elohim. In it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, 
nor your main servant, nor your ox, nor your ass, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates, that your manservant and your maidservant may rest as well as you. Verse 15, And remember that you were a servant in the land of Mitzrayim, or Egypt, and that Yahuwah, your Elohim, brought you out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded you to keep the day of Shabbat. Honor, that means to provide for your father and your mother, as Yahuwah, your Elohim, hath commanded you, that your days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with you, in the land which Yahuwah, your Elohim, giveth you. You shall not kill, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor, neither shall you lust after your neighbor's wife, neither shall you lust after you, and neither shall you lust after your neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. May the word of the Most High be blessed. Amen. Bless your great name. Amen. Bless your great name. At this time, we're going to read our final scripture, which is found in the writings of the apostles. It's the Besora, the message of Mark. We're going to go to Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31. And if you have that, Say amen. 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 The text reads, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Yahshua answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Baruch Hashem Zion. You may have your seats. Bless the Almighty today. We're grateful for the scriptures that our Elohim gives us. He gives us the scriptures so that we can know what he wants. That we can know his ways so that we can know what he requires from us. Yes, Zion, the Almighty requires something out of you and me. <laughs> we don't always like to hear that word require because so oftentimes when we hear the preaching of the message of our Messiah and receiving of his salvation and the grace of Elohim, for some reason or another, there's this idea that has come about that the term grace and re requirements are almost two diametrically opposed concepts. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that they work hand in hand because grace from the Hebrew term chain, it means Elohim taking us from the outside and bringing us into his house and puts us in a favorable position. Being put in a favorable position does not eliminate the fact that the Almighty requires obedience out of our lives. No different than if I was to adopt a child and bring the child into my home. I also require of that child to obey the rules of the house so that we can have order in the family. And I think that when we begin to understand terms and words and 
concepts in a way where it fits more Hebraically, we don't see this whole difference between concepts. The Almighty requires out of our lives a lifestyle. He requires out of the world a lifestyle. He said the Almighty requires out of the world a lifestyle of obedience. Yes, he does. You see, if the Almighty didn't require a lifestyle of obedience from the world, then there would be no need for him to judge the world of those who rebel. It is because he requires it and demands it that he's going to bring judgment upon all of those who do not believe. But I'm glad that our Elohim was not bent on leaving the situation like that. I'm glad that in his foreknowledge, because you do know the Almighty has foreknowledge. He, he sees down the road and knows everything down the road. And he doesn't have to think in a process like we human beings do. You know, we human beings, we think in a process. We think in step, step one, step two, step three to get to this particular goal or aim. But Elohim, he, you know, he just knows it all. He knew man was going to mess it all up before he created it. Can you imagine that? Knew the pain he would have to deal with. Knew the rejection he would have to deal with. Knew the disappointment that he would have to deal with. But yet at the same time created human beings. And then set up a means by which those who would believe and repent can be restored. The fellowship. I don't know what you call that, Zion, but I call that divine love. Yes, amen. He wanted those who he made that look like him. He wanted those whom he made that bear his image to have the opportunity to be restored. And so I'm grateful today that him sending the Messiah Yahushua into the world to brings about this restoration of all of those who would believe, all of those who would repent. And for those who might be watching who have not yet made that choice, I want to encourage you to turn to Messiah. Elohim loves you. His arms are still extended. And your life matters to him. He just wants you to make that choice to come. Zion, Let's keep doing our best to live the word, to love living the word, to rejoice in him as we experience the blessings of living the word, and see him do mighty great things in our lives. Amen, man, Zion? Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Praise his great name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful savior. He's a yes. wonderful deliverer. And he loves us so much, and we're grateful for everything that he has done and what he will do. Bless the Almighty. We appreciate each and every one of you. We thank each and every one of you for your commitment. We bless the Most High for the support of each one of the congregants. And we thank you for your commitment most of all unto the Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 It takes all of us working together mm -hmm. to accomplish and do the work of the Father in the earth. Yes. Hallelujah. And as we submit ourselves unto the Almighty and we keep ourselves available, he can be effective in and through us to reach the world and to touch those who have need of him. And I want to encourage us to always be in a position where the Most High can use us and work through us. Amen. Amen, Zion. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, today I want to share our history bit. Bless the Almighty. We're going to look at the 11th century. We're just moving our way through from Amen. century to century. And I trust that each one of you have been learning as we have been going through this booklet on 
the history of Sabbath keeping in the Messianic community throughout the centuries. Bless his name. As we look at the 11th century, we want to read a couple of historical quotes that will give us information regarding Sabbath keeping and its significance. We want to look at Scotland and Ireland. Scotland and Ireland. Now, before I read this, I want to mention to us that some time ago, we had provided a history bit on St. Patrick and how St. Patrick in his bringing the faith to Ireland had came from the church in Scotland. That's where he was raised up and trained in. And he went to Ireland and was there and established over a hundred something congregations there. So the Most High used him tremendously. One of the things that is not mentioned about him, and that is because the Roman Catholic Church adopted him into their canon as being a saint or wanted to claim his work as coming from them. You do not hear much about him being a Sabbath keeper. And this is something that is essential that we need to know because the keeping of the Sabbath was something that was very significant among the congregations in both Scotland in Ireland. So I want to read the quote, the quote today. Quote, T. Ratcliffe Barnett, in his book on the fervent Catholic Queen of Scotland, who in 1060 was first to attempt the ruin of Columbus' brethren, writes, in this matter, the Scots had perhaps kept up the traditional usage of the ancient Irish church which observed Saturday instead of Sunday as the day of rest. This was written by Barnett and the book was called Margaret of Scotland, Queen and Saint, page 97. Now let me pause for a moment. As you know, St. Patrick had already come to Ireland and had evangelized and raised up congregations all over Ireland. This is St. St. Patrick had lived prior to the 11th century. And so when we read this here, this particular statement is referring to the Queen of Scotland who at that time was a Catholic but was trying to change the faith that had been embraced by the people of Scotland and Ireland to be a Roman Catholic faith. And so in the quotation, we see that an attempt was made to try to shut down what was going on with reference to the Sabbath-keeping congregations. As it says, in the matter of the Scots, it says they kept the traditional ancient use of what the Irish church was doing. Now, mind you, the Irish church is, by, by virtue of St. Patrick, is a daughter of the church in Scotland. When you go back centuries, that makes sense to everybody. But way back here in this 11th century, we see the evidences that the church in Ireland was keeping the Sabbath. You see that? Yes, sir. So we have many evidences that begin to show up 
not just by those who are in favor of keeping the Shabbat, but by those who are not in favor of keeping the Shabbat. They give witness to what was already being practiced by the peoples in the land. Second quote we want to look at. We want to look at Constantinople. Now Constantinople is east of Rome. Constantinople, quote, it says, because you observe the Sabbath with the Jews and the Lord's day with us, you seem to imitate with such observance the sect of the Nazarenes. This was written by Migne in a book called Patrologia Latina, volume 145, page 506. Now, what's interesting in this quote, as it pertains to the church in Constantinople, in particular, this was with regard to the Orthodox Church in Constantinople, that they kept the Sabbath. And during that time, they had two celebrations. They had one on Shabbat, and they had another on the day after Shabbat. At this particular time in history, they, they were uh, doing it on Sunday morning, but they had two. And so the statement that is made here, it's made from a person that's a part of the Roman Catholic system because they are demeaning the Orthodox Church in Constantinople because they are keeping the Sabbath with the Jews. You see that in the quote? Yes, sir. And at that particular time in history, in the 11th century, that was a very, very critical time in history because that was the century that there was an official splintering or an official division between the churches of the East and the churches of the West. This is where the Pope of Rome excommunicated the patriarch of the churches of the East and the patriarch of the churches of the East excommunicated the Pope. It happened here in this time period. So we find statements being made that reveal to us that the Sabbath was continually being observed. But what is interesting about this particular quote that I want to raise up out of it is the fact that it says that you seem to imitate with such observance the sect of the Nazarenes. Now, during that time, the sect of the Nazarenes had continued to exist since the time of the first century, being very Torah observant and believing in the Messiah, Yahshua. Yes, the sect of the Nazarenes. This is the original name by which the Messianic Israelite community was named. And so what we see is that as congregations were developing and forming and, and were becoming crystallized in their own religious traditions, there was still that sect that was still following more closely to the original pattern. And the Catholic Church knew about it. And we see information with regard to the sect of the Nazarenes when we see information such as this. We'll see it in a negative light, but the sect of the Naz Nazarenes still existed. Very, very important. Last quote, the Greek church. The Greek church. Quote, the observance of Saturday is, as everyone knows, the subject of a bitter dispute between the Greeks and the Latins. I'll read that again. 
The observance of Saturday is, as everyone knows, the subject of a bitter dispute between the Greeks and the Latins. This is written by Neil in a book called A History of the Holy Eastern Church, volume 1, page 731. Now, the reason why this statement is made is because during this particular time, as we have already noted, as we've already said, the churches of the East, primarily, if they were east of Rome, were Greek in their speaking and their biblical text was Greek. When you go from the land of Israel eastward, the language was Hebrew Aramaic. But what was common among all of these churches that were east of Rome is that they all kept the Sabbath. That was a common factor among them. It was the Latins, anytime you know, you hear the word Latins, that's the Romans. The Latins were the ones who did not keep Shabbat. They were against it. They wrote against it. And they did everything that they could to influence the other congregations to not practice it. And what we find, as I wrap this history bit up, what we find is that the Latin or Roman Catholic system appeared to be somewhat successful in their Latinizing of many of the congregations in the East. Whereas we see this quote about this great dispute between the Greeks and the Latins, Today in the 21st century, if you go to a Greek Orthodox church, they don't keep Shabbat anymore. They don't worship on the Sabbath anymore. They worship only on Sunday. So well, how do you know that? I visited one right here in this city. I've read up extensively. But is that their history based upon the writings that we've looked at and based upon the quote that we have here that was not originally their history. And so as we become more familiar with the history of, of these movements and the, and the history of these churches it is important that we understand the origins because as we move further and further away if we do not share this information, if we do not inform you about what was the ancient practice, then we who are believers in this generation will begin to think and believe that what is going on presently has always been. Does that make sense to everybody? And so it's important that we share this information, that, that we help Zion to understand the roots of our faith. And I know I come each week with regard to the same thing, but what I'm trying to do, Zion, as we move through each century, is to help us to see how things change from century to century, but also to provide the evidences for us so we can see that rich history and know that what we're doing is right. Okay. And with that, we bless the Almighty. Uh, but Zion, today, we want to share <clears throat> as we look at the book of Yeshayahu, we are going to be dealing with chapter 2, verses 6 through 22. Verses 6 through 22. And after we read the text, I'm going to come back and I'm going to deal with this particular verse that we have up here 
in the Hebrew and that we translate it and we'll go into those details. But at this time I want to draw your attention to the text of Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6 through 22. Today we are reading 17 verses. And if you have it, say amen. amen. Blessed be he. Beginning at verse 6. Therefore you have forsaken your people, the house of Yaakov, because they be filled as from aforetime, and are soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves in begetting children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, mm. that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man bows down, and the great man humbles himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock and hide yourself in the dust for fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humble and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of Yahuwah Zavaot shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low. Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols shall he utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. Verse 20. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each one for himself to worship to moles and to bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of his majesty. When he arises to shake terribly the earth, cease you from man or turn away from man whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Let us pray. Father, I do bless and I thank you for another opportunity to be able to share the word and teaching. I pray, Abba, that you would provide wisdom and counsel as we bring the scriptures to your people today. I pray, Father, that you would cause each one that's assembled to have an open heart, to have an open mind, 
spirit that is able to receive truth. Speak to us, Abba, in the teaching. May your great name be praised in all that is done. And I will bless you in the mighty name of our Redeemer, Yahshua. Amen. 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 As you know, from the beginning of the second chapter, we heard the prophet giving Israel a glimpse into their future so that they would know what was their destiny and that it would be a glorious destiny where the Messiah would rule and his people would rule with him where the world would be a place where the Torah would be taught, Amen. where all nations would come to Jerusalem and seek to be taught the Torah of the Most High. A world where war would cease, where the instruments of war and destruction would be converted into instruments of agriculture, Amen. For farming purposes. That's right. But as we look at the latter part of chapter 6, we notice the prophet again shifting. And he begins to talk about the condition of the people. Hmm. He begins to speak with regard to things that they were practicing and what they were doing that caused the anger of Elohim to be upon them. And in the midst of that, he begins to prophesy regarding coming judgments of Elohim as well as to make declarations of what they were doing that he saw with his own eyes. So as we look at the sixth verse, prophet is speaking and he says you've forgotten your people and then he begins to talk about why now in this sixth verse as I was looking at it and studying it For some reason or another in the text that I was reading from, and you know, I read from a number of different translations, but this particular statement as I read it in the translation, for some reason it didn't sit right with me. There are times when I believe the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, begins to nudge me to let me know that you need to go deeper into what this is saying. I'm not one who has a complete trust in the English translation of the scripture. That's right. So when I'm reading, sometimes the Ruach, as I mentioned, he'll just stop me. I'll just, I'll just be stopped. I, something in me will just get twisted and it won't let me move past it until I see what it is. And as I began to look into it a little bit more and investigate it a little bit more, I began to discover that the translation wasn't translated as accurately as it should have been. I looked in some translations, all of the different Hebrew translated Bibles I have, whether it's the Sefer or whether it's the other translation I have, whatever it is, and, 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 and I still was not satisfied. I looked in the, the King James, I, I looked in the NIV, and in every instance, I did not see something that satisfied my spirit with reference to what it should be saying. So I began to do the work of an individual word study of the text in Hebrew. And I discovered something interesting. And I felt that it was important that I provide that translation. 
Now, I didn't put the actual Hebrew letters. What I did primarily was put what it sounds like in speaking Hebrew. And then I put the literal translation underneath it. In the same order as it's presented. Now, much of the time when we are reading <coughs> scripture, what many may not be aware of is that the words in the English translation is not always in the same order as it is in the Hebrew. Did you know that? Yes, sir. Sometimes they rearrange the words. And when they do that, for those who may not be aware of it, sometimes it's done purposefully in the translation. You do not have the original intent or idea that's presented. As I looked in this translation that I read from here, because I make I make changes when I when I go and do an in-depth word study, I start making changes in the translation <laughs> that I have here. So if you come look in this and you look at what the original writing is in here, you might see a line through here and another word there. That's what I do. Because I don't trust it. Alright? I gotta have what's accurate. And so Originally, in the text that I'm looking at, what it says is that after, after the text where it says, therefore you have forsaken your people, O house of Yaakov, because they be replenished from the east. That's what it says literally, or I'll say the translation says, but not literally from the, the Hebrew. And so as I began to look at the words, and I was asking myself the question, how did they get filled up? How did they get filled up from the east when they had not yet gone to the east? In this particular time in history, Israel as a whole had not yet gone to the east to come back to the land. That hadn't taken place yet. But as I looked at the word, where in many translations it will say the east, I found out that it's the word me kedim, kedim. right over here in this corner. Mm. Now, the word me kedim, if you bear with me, because I need to take my time and go through it, I think you'll appreciate it after we so get right. done. Take your time, take so your time. Give me about five minutes to just go through this, take and then we're going to go back into the text and really see what the prophet is saying. When you look at Hebrew words, we, we have to understand what the letters mean. Now, anytime you see me, the 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 mem, and you have the yo, is it me? That means from. That 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 just means from. It's, it's a separate word all to itself. But it comes before Kadim. The kuf, the dalit, and the mem are the three letters in the Hebrew that make up the word Kedim. The Kuf is the sun on the horizon. That's what it looks like. It looks like a circle and a line as the sun being on the horizon. And the Dalit represents a door. The Mim represents waters. So the idea is that the sun that's on the horizon has come through the door and is going over the waters. Now what that indicates, especially back in that time, when they hear that word, it represents two things. If it's with respect to direction, mm -hmm. and, and some, some of us need some help with direction, <laughs> knowing where north, south, east, and west is, right? <laughs> so with reference to direction, knowing that the sun, because because if you read in the book of Hanak, when it talks about the sun, and even in, in uh, 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 the scripture text, it says that the sun goes into its chamber, right? But when it begins to make its circuit, as the scripture said, it comes through the door out of its chamber. So the idea is that the sun is beginning its circuit. It has to do with the beginning of a cycle of things with respect to time. Now, with respect to direction, we know that that is regarded to in English as the east. Hmm. But in most instances, when 
when east, with reference to direction, is referred to, the yod is in the word right after the dalit. That's an indicator to know whether they mean it's referring to direction or time. So this particular word, mikadim, is referring to that which is from beforehand or from afore time. Because with reference to when the sun begins to come through the door and over the waters, it has to do with this concept of that which is in front of where you are. Mm. So the idea that's presented here in this text is not that it is that the people are replenished or filled from the east. It has to do with the idea that the people are filled from time past or as in a latter time. That's the idea that's presented. Now, once I get through this, I'm going to bring confirmation to the translation so that you can see that we, we you know, we, we do know what we're talking about somewhat as we're the Holy Spirit. Over here in this part, the wa, om, nim, anytime you see the wa before a word, that's the, that's the wa, it means and. Yes, teach it means and. Teachers, teachers, teachers. So you have and or soothsayers. Hmm. Over here, Ka Philistine, like the Philistines. But <clears throat> these last few words are the ones that I really wanted to take some time to talk about. Because what I noticed is that in a number of translations, there's all kind of things going on. And I saw over in uh, the NIV that it says something like that it says something to the, to, with reference to pagan customs and the word pagan and customs is nowhere in these words in Hebrew but I want to go through what these words mean so basically what it's saying is that the people had become filled up like as in a time past and they are now soothsayers like the Philistines but also we have what which is the waf, which means and, and we have yeladi. Yeladi means child in most instances when we hear that word. Yes. But literally, literally, it means to bring to birth a child or begetting children. That's what it literally means. Mm. You see, the, the yaw, the lament, the Dalit and the Yod again, it has to do with the idea of the hand with the shepherd's staff going through the door. It has to do with the idea of bringing something into being or birthing. So when I looked at this, I said, oh, okay. It has to do with birthing or begetting. I went and digged a little further and found out that everywhere where you find the word beget, you know how we go and we look at the generations where it says, and, and Methuselah begat so-and-so, and Jared begat so-and-so. You know, we see that word begat, 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 begat. That's yet it, yet it, yet it, yet it, let it. That's what it is. It means to bring into existence or to birth. And so this word here, no Korean means strangers or foreigners. So as I'm reading this, I'm saying, wait a minute. So we know we know that the prophet is speaking with regard to their sinful behavior. We get that idea from Jump Street, right? Because the Most High has forsaken them, right? We know that, right? We get that. But as we're reading this, and I'm looking in the text here, and, and in the text here, what I read, it says that they please themselves in the children of strangers. This last word down here, yaspiku, that means pleasure or satisfaction. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, but, but, but there's something more to it. What the prophet is actually saying is that they're soothsayers and they are birthing children of strangers as a means of pleasure and satisfaction. 
So what they were doing, they were not just satisfying themselves in the children of strangers. No, they were intermingling with the people in the land and they were producing babies of strangers. This is what they were doing. In some translation it says strange children. And so as I, as I was dealing with this, I went over into the Septuagint. Now, you all know that as we've been teaching, we've been talking about how that the Septuagint is the first Greek translation of the Hebrew Scriptures. And that the Septuagint, in my opinion, preserved what the idea and the thinking was by those believing people in Elohim as to how they wanted the Hebrew to be understood. So when I looked in the Septuagint, and I've got the Septuagint with me here today, when I read it, matter of fact, let me get it. I didn't bring it up. Give me a moment. I'm just going to pull it out. Give me a moment. I want to read this to you, Zion. Because I was going through this translation. I was looking at this. I began to look at the Septuagint, and lo and behold, when I looked in the Septuagint, I found that what I came up with was almost identical to what it says in the Septuagint. So, in Yeshayahu chapter 2, verse 6, what you listen to, Zion? This is the way it reads in the Septuagint. For he has forsaken his people, the house of Israel. Now it should be Jacob, but they put Israel here. Because their land is filled as at the beginning with divinations. That's where it's talking about the soothsaying. And as the land of the Philistines, many strange children were born to them. This is what it says in the Septuagint. Hmm. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. So the idea that was presented way back in the 3rd century BCE when they translated the Hebrew into the Greek, they brought with it this idea that the people of Israel, while they were in their wickedness, were involved in divination. They were hooking up with the other nations, having babies with them, and being satisfied in it. Now one might ask, well, well, why then, why then does the text that you reading from right here and them other Hebrew translations have in it, why does it not have all of that detail? I'm going to tell you why. Because those translations use the Masoretic text as their foundation when they're translating. The Masoretic text came about between the 6th and the 10th century CE. So we're talking about what? Eight or nine hundred years after the Septuagint? That's the reason. Now I said to you sometimes I just get these nudges. It's, I get uncomfortable. I get when I'm in my study. I just get uncomfortable, and I'm like, no, mm -mm, no, 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 no. I can't put my finger on it. Mm. Mm. But the Most High brings me into these studies because He wants to show me what He really wants to say. Now let's get into the text. <laughs> because in many of your Bibles it says something different. I already know. I already looked it up. I went back to the old trustworthy Septuagint and found the same thing. Hmm. That's why when we are studying scripture, you need to know the Hebrew, stick with what the meanings of the words are, and bring forth the proper message. That makes sense to everybody. Yes, sir. So what, so what was going on in here? What was going on in here is that the people were involved in all kinds of wickedness. The Most High had told Israel before they get into the land, 
He said, don't give your daughters to the, 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 the children of the other nations. Don't give your son. No, don't do it. Don't intermingle. Don't intermarry with the other nations. Now, he wasn't saying that because he wanted to maintain a pure bloodline. You know, some people, <laughs> some people, they have this idea where, you know, you're not supposed to be with another people because your bloodline need to be pure. Mm -hmm. You know. And then they'll start talking about, you know, you know why, why, why are you with this black person? Or why are you with this white person? Or why are you with, you know. You know, the Bible said you're not supposed to go in the meeting with the other nations, right? That's right. Right? That's exactly what they do. Now, we know in Israel today that Israel is as multicolored as can be. Come on now. From the whitest of the white to yes. the blackest of the black of people all over the world. Hallelujah. You blood descended Israelites. Amen. So that's not the reason why the Most High said, don't go and give your daughters to the other nations. Come on. It's because he didn't want them to get involved in the pagan practices. That's right. Thank now, you. if somebody from the other nations wanted to come in and join Israel and they got hooked up, beautiful. Everybody is worshiping and serving the Most High Yah. Praise Yah. But what Israel was doing at this time, as the prophet is talking about their backslidden condition right here. Come on. Preach. He's talking about the fact that here they are over here involved in soothsaying, divination, Woo. involved in all kinds of sexual immorality. And, and, and then they're enjoying what they're doing. <laughs> now notice, 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 notice what was happening to them. Because what we see is that the prophet says that they were filled. Gives the idea that they were trying to satisfy themselves. And the way they did it is just like men do it all the time. What do they do to try to satisfy themselves? They fill their land with what? Money. Silver and gold, the text says. Horses and chariots. Right? So, so how, how, how does a people establishes itself as being powerful. They become enriched with wealth and establish a military power. King Dawid in Psalm 20, verse 7. I want you to notice what he said. He made a statement and he said that some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of Yahuwah, our Elohim. King Dawid knew that the thing that nations look at as a means of showing themselves as a power is to establish their security with wealth and the military Power structure. Back in that time, some trust in chariots and horses. That refers to the military power. King Dawid had already said this a couple of hundred years ago, but now in Israel, they're trusting in their horses and in their chariots and their silver and their gold. They filled up their land with it. And they're basically making an indirect statement to the Most High that we don't really need you. You can close it down. They're saying to the Most High, we don't really need you. Another thing we find out that the land was filled with was that it was filled with idols. Uh -huh. So when the prophet said, because you are filled, <laughs> he's running the list down. You're filled with idols. And you're mean men. You're great men. You're people of prominence. You're people of stature. You're people among whom all the other folks have respect for. They bow themselves down to these idols. Yes. The ones who are supposed to be your examples, they're bowing themselves down to these idols. Come and on. the prophet, I can see 
him in his mind as he's describing the condition of Israel at that time. He says, you know, with all of this wickedness, I'm going to live in a little bit. You know, with all of this wickedness that you all are doing, Abba Yah, don't forgive them. Read the book. Read the book. In the last part of the 8th verse, what does it say? Therefore, forgive them not. That's right. No, Abba, don't forgive them for this. No, don't let them slide on this one. They don't need to be forgiven. They need to be judged. The prophet in himself was, was like, look, I, look, I'm sick of seeing this. This is the people that, that has a rich history. That's seen the deliverance of Elohim. That's been brought out through many things. But now they have the audacity to be involved in the practices of the nations, to have their land filled up with idols. And then in chapter 1, the prophet had talked about how the people would come before Elohim in the temple, would offer sacrifices, bring in their burnt offerings, lifting their hands in prayer, and the most I said, I am covering my face. Well, now the prophet is given the reason why the most high was covering his face. Amen. Because while they're coming to the sanctuary of the Most High and trying to act like they love Elohim, they will go out and get involved with the nations in all of their stuff and had idols all over the land. They didn't just come to the temple of the Most High in Jerusalem and worship the Most High. They will go out from there and go worship whatever deity and idol they had set up along with its shrine. And the Most High is saying, y'all nothing but holes. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it like that. I'm just trying to get your attention. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you definitely got it. Most definitely. <laughs> y'all be surprised sometimes. <laughs> y'all who offended, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. But the Most High is very plain about what He says about them. And they come to Him and they want to try and offer Him worship. And so the prophet continues to speak. And the prophet tells them, the Most High is coming. The day of Yahuwah Zebaot is coming. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what the day of Yahuwah Zebaot means, that means the day when Yah brings his armies down into the earth realm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's the day when Yah brings his armies down into the earth realm. Amen. Yahuwah Zebaot. Amen. Yahuwah of heaven's armies, Yahuwah of hosts, mm -hmm. that's when he brings his armies down into the earth realm and he begins to bring about judgments upon the wickedness of men. Mm -hmm. So the prophet says in the 10th verse on through to the 21st verse, the prophet is just talking about what y'all need to do because the day of Yah is coming. He said, go hide yourselves in the rocks. Yeah. Go hide yourselves in the caves. Go hide yourselves in the clefts of the rocks. Go hide yourselves in the dust. Go hide yourself in the holes. You're going to have to hide yourself because Yah is coming. Amen. Yes, he is. And because you're in his land, and because you have idols all over his land, he's going to come and he's going to destroy all of them idols up in his land. Come on now. Oh, they don't like this. The prophet said that y'all need to get out and hide for the fear of Yah and for what the scripture says, the glory of his majesty. Because yes. when it comes and begins to exercise judgment, he's not just coming to judge. He's going to set up his kingdom in the land. Yes. See, when he comes and he begins to deal with the wickedness of people, he's going to simultaneously yes. set up his kingdom Indeed. in the land. So he's talking about what's going to happen primarily in the end of days. Yes, amen. Yes. The people, as the Bible says, are going to hide themselves and say to the rocks, fall, fall on us, cover us mm -hmm. from the wrath of the Lamb, mm -hmm. from the wrath of him that sits upon the throne. Amen. amen. We find the prophet in here. 
Hallelujah. Yes. Talking about how the Most High is going to come and bring down all of the things that have exalted itself in the place of the Most High. He's going to bring down every proud person, yes, every exalted person, mm -hmm. every exalted thing that lifts itself up before the Most High. He's going to bring it down. He's going to abolish the idols. And when he gets finished doing all of that, the text of scripture says that he's going to arise and shake the earth terribly. He's going to get up and he's going to shake the earth. You're talking about earthquake time. It's going to be earthquake time because the Most High wants to make a statement to his people and to the nations that you cannot live on this planet that he has made and do all of the wickedness and be able to get away from it. The Most High is going to come and clean house first. All right now. Preach. Yes, indeed. Prophet. As he's prophesying, seeing all of this, I believe he interjects his own personal feelings here. The last verse, he, he makes a statement. And the way it reads in the scripture text, it says, you cease from man. In other words, it's a way of saying, turn away from man. The prophet in his own way was talking to Yah. And saying to Yah, turn away from man. Don't forgive him. Judge him. Bring the judgment. That's what the prophet was saying. He wanted judgment to come up on them because he saw the wickedness. He saw the rebellion. He saw the mercy of Elohim, but he saw the rebellion of the people. You know what's the only what gets me sometimes? When I look at those who call themselves believers. Because this message is not to the nations. This message is not to the idolaters that surrounded the people of Israel. It wasn't to the Philistines. It wasn't to the Ammonites. It wasn't to the Moabites. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to the people that were living around them that worshipped all of these other deities that now the Israelites were also participating in. It was written to the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're right. When we transition this text of scripture and bring it over into our world in the 21st century, I'm about to wrap this up. Go ahead. There are many things we see Good that seem to be very similar yes. to what was going on That's right. here mm. in the time of the prophet Yeshayahu. Amen. It's true. We got congregations today Help us, Lord. that will tell you it's fine Help, Lord. to go ahead and have a same-sex marriage. Mess. This this is in Zion. Yeah. That's mess. Now, what they do in the world is the world. Yeah. I ain't trying to change no laws in the land. I don't care about changing no laws in the land. Because that's the land. That's their government. That's their system. That's right. They do what they want to do. You want to marry somebody that's of the same sex, that's your business. Do what you want to do. I'm not trying to trying to tell somebody, oh, well, you should now do what you want to do. You're not in Zion. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I'm, I'm serious. You're right. You're right. You ain't in Zion. You follow something else. Do what you want to do. Do your thing. With how many people you want to do as much as you want to do. I say, look, I don't care. Can't legislate righteousness. That's right. We don't legislate righteousness. Bingo. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what the scripture said over in Revelation? We just got out of the book of Revelation, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the text where it says, He that is holy, let him be holy still. Yes. Amen. But he that is unholy, let him be unholy still. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be righteous, don't. One of the things I've learned after 40 some years of preaching, I don't force people to follow the scripture. I just teach it. Hallelujah. I teach the way. Hallelujah. If you want to know Elohim, this is the way. Walk therein. Hallelujah. It's up to you. Yeah. I don't change it. I don't compromise it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to love everybody on the planet the same. Amen. I ain't going to look at somebody funny because they're walking in lifestyles that's contradictory to the scriptures. Whatever you want to do, you do. That's you. 
But don't do what you do with, instead of doing what you're doing and then go try to step in Zion and promote that in Zion. Mm, right. That's when these prophets and apostles are going to raise up and they're going to tell you, you can't do that in Zion. Mm -hmm. Get out of Zion. You can do it. Do what you want. Mm -hmm. But what we got going on right now, we got all kinds of stuff going on That's the truth. among those who call themselves people of the most high. I ain't never seen a time Yes, yes. Where people who say they preach the message are shacking up with women. Mm -hmm. I remember brother. Yes. Brother was into some music. He was a minister. I met him on the street, invited him to come to the sanctuary and do some, you know, some some, some gospel rap and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, he hooks up with some sister and, uh, and he talking about getting married and everything. And I'm like, okay. And and you know, he said, well, you know, by the way, you know, we and he's up here living with her. In his place, I'm like, whoa! I can expect that from worldly people. Mm -hmm. You know, you you're in the world, okay? Yeah, you promote. You know, I mean, we see commercials on TV that promote shacking up. You know, they don't use shacking up. It's just mm -hmm. people living together. <laughs> you know, all right. Just but that's the world. That's, that's the world. That's the world. That's, world. that's their thing. That's their thing. They don't believe in the scripture yes, like we do. They don't do what you want. They don't. They don't believe it. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they did, they practice it. So that's what they do. That's what they do. But when you have people who are ministers, say they believe in Jesus, all right? Mm -hmm. The one who died on the cross, rose from the dead, who's coming back again, and this is how they're living, yes. and they have no conviction about what they do, yes. we got problems. Hmm. We got problems. Mm -hmm. Or when I read about this other minister, woman and she was a part of some denominational church I'm not sure if it was the Presbyterian church or the Episcopalian church I, I don't know which one it was I don't know which one it was but I was reading a document that she had wrote and then and this is from a, a female minister now you know I don't have no problem with female ministers I wrote a book called Women in Ministry I'm all for women being in the ministry I don't have no problem with that so don't think that I'm saying this because okay, this is a female minister and, and women ought not to be preaching. No, I don't minutes. believe that. I'm talking about a person who is a minister. It could have been a man. But because it was a woman, she makes this statement with respect to abortion. And she said that if a woman gets pregnant and it interrupts <laughs> her ability to move forward in her life and she believes that aborting the child Jeez. yes aborting the child would make her advancement in life to be better it's okay to abort the child that's crazy. now I can expect that from somebody that's in the world okay. I can expect that from somebody that is Pro-choice. I can expect that from somebody who is an atheist. I can expect that. You hear me? I can expect that. And I'm not fighting against all of y'all who want to abort children. I'm not for it, but I ain't fighting. I'm not going to go and have one of the brothers go and have a bomb and say, you know, brother, go you know, put that bomb over there by that, uh, you know, oh, Planned no. Parenthood. No, we don't do that kind of stuff. That's that mess. We're we, we not into that. We want to see you delivered and know the scriptures and walk in the scriptures, but we don't do that. Mm -hmm. All right? That's wrong. Yeah. Wow. But this was a woman, a minister, believer in Jesus. Y'all hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And this is the kind of stuff that is being taught today. Amen. I couldn't believe it. Amen. I couldn't believe it. So when I look at what was going on in the time of Yeshua Yahoo. And how the people were coming to the temple, offering worship to the Most High. Mm -hmm. But then once they leave, they go right and interact with the world and get involved in everything that the pagan system is doing. Like it wasn't nothing. I mean, they didn't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. It's going on today in our world, Zeal. When the Most High raises us to preach from books like this, 
It's because he's trying to give Zion a wake up call as to what's happening right now Amen. and to call his people to repentance. Hallelujah. And for those who are compromisers, those who are looking over and wondering, well, I don't know, maybe it's okay. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe the maybe the Lord is changing some things. You know. Everything is about the most high change of things. Well, you know, I mean, you know, we, we're not under that Old Testament anymore, you know. We're under the New Testament now. So, I mean, you know, all that stuff, yeah, back then, back then. Back then, back then. When y'all said, I am Yahuwah, and I change not. We must understand as we move forward in our walk with Elohim, in our life with Elohim, in our pressing into Elohim, that we must make a distinction between that which is righteous and that which is unrighteous. And as the prophet began to speak regarding what he saw, and he talked to the Almighty, see, if it was left up to the prophet, there would be no repentance at all available. <laughs> see, the prophet said, don't forgive them. Uh, the prophet said, listen, y'all, turn from them. But do you know what y'all did? Y'all did come through, and he did deal with his people. He did remove them out of the land. He did. Well... He did destroy the idols in the land yeah. and he brought his people into a position of captivity. But the thing that I love about Elohim is that even though man might deserve not to have any forgiveness, All right. even though he might deserve to be turned away from Come on righteous now. Elohim, that who horse. in his righteousness Ride should that. have turned away from Israel and obliterated all of them. I thank the most high that the prophetic word came for a restoration, that the Almighty would restore Praise the fortunes Lord. of Israel and Yahudah, and that the Most High would bring them back, and that in the last days, he said, I'm going to gather again the outcast, hallelujah, and the dispersed of Israel and Yahudah. You see, what the Most High did was interject mercy. <laughs> You are, come on. I'm glad, I'm glad. Hallelujah. I'm glad that he is yet merciful. All of those who are living in contradiction to the truth of the word, you know, the, 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 the window of mercy is still open for you. It's still open for you. But it's not going to be open always. Because as the prophet said, the day of Yahuwah Dezebel is coming. But right now, he is merciful. Yes, sir. Right now, he is merciful. And he wants you to know that you can turn around and you can be restored, whoever you might be. I'm going to close on that note. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Your great name is worthy to be praised. I trust that the teaching today, Abba, has touched someone's life. Mm -hmm. That it has caused those who might find themselves in these compromising positions in their life and in their walk with respect to you that might be living a double life with respect to your commandments. Mm. I pray, Father, for your mercy to be upon them at this time. I pray that you would, by your spirit, convict them and cause them to turn in repentance and to be truly delivered and walk in your ways. And I pray, Abba, that you would help us as your people today. That as we live this life, that we don't become so entangled right. with the ways of this world that we forget about your holiness. Yes, 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 yes. I thank you for reminding us you, of this truth from this book. Master, great 
And I pray, Father, that you would touch your people as they reflect on their lives and as they continue to seek you. Help us that we might remain firm in our faith, for we need you every day. We can't do it without you. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Yahshua, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I trust that the word has hit home with each one of you. Mm. That the voice of Elohim has been heard in the teaching today. We always want to hear from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is indeed worthy to be praised. Thank you, At this time, Zion, we want to prepare ourselves to share in the Shelobim Communion Fellowship together. And so before we do that, we want to have our prayer of examination yes, yes. so that we may be able to share in this fellowship with the right heart and the right mind. Amen. Yes, Let us pray. Yes, thank you. Abba, we do thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness toward us. We pray, Abba, that you search our hearts, search our minds, so that as we prepare to receive of the Shalomim, we may be found worthy because our hearts are right. Forgive us of all unconfessed sin. We pray that the relationships that we may have that are strained, we ask your forgiveness on our part so that we may be able to share in the shell of me with you with a clean heart and a right mind. Now, Abba, bless your people. We will give your name the praise in the mighty name of Yahshua. Just look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. I need you like the ocean needs the water, or it will run dry. I need you like the many stars above. Needs the setting of the sky. Blessed be you, O Yahuwah, O Elohim, King of the universe. Bring our bread from the earth. We bless you for our Messiah being our bread of life and manna from heaven. The old Bless to you, O Yahuwah, O Elohim, King of the universe, creator of the truth of God. We thank you for the spilled blood of our Redeemer that has been given for our redemption and healing in the renewed covenant. Hallelujah. 
Let us stand at this time. Let us come and receive of the Shalom. Shalom with the Father. You may drink the cup. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. tithings or offerings to give unto the Almighty through this congregation, you can go to our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com and you can click on the donate button. Also, you can give through Cash App, which is our preferred method of donating. Our Cash App code is dollar sign NCMMI. We thank you so much for your attendance. 
and trust that you have been blessed and encouraged in the gathering on today. For those of you in the sanctuary, we trust that you have heard the voice of Elohim, that you have been strengthened and encouraged. And if the Most High has touched you, and if he has moved in your life, treasure that move that he has made in your treasure, what you have heard, and do great things for him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to speak the final blessing and be dismissed. Hallelujah. Yebereka Yahuwah, be yismareka ya er Yahuwah pana. Ileka vikuneka, yesa Yahuwah pana. Ileka ve yesim leka shalom. Now may Yahuwah bless you and protect you. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Avinu, shalom aleikum. Our Father's peace be upon you. Shabbat shalom to each of you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.